Before reaching its final version during the times of the First Order, the Stormtrooper armor went through numerous evolution phases adapted to the needs of each era. Here are the most important. Phase 1 Clone Trooper armor was the first iteration in the design of the clone armor. Constructed by Kevin Owen Armor Smith, Phase 1 featured a vibe support system, a tracking device for monitoring troop movements, and a display screen all built within the helmet. The armor's design was also reminiscent of the Mandalorian armor worn by the clone template, the bounty hunter Jango Fett, particularly in the helmet which featured a similar T-shaped visor. The armor could be standardized and produced rapidly due to the fact that the clone troopers were genetically identical soldiers. Despite the advantages it offered, Phase 1 was uncomfortable to wear due to the Kaminoans' unfamiliarity with human ergonomics. Phase 2 Clone Trooper armor was the improved version of its Phase 1 counterpart, providing Clone Troopers with better vision as well as armor plates that were both lighter and stronger. The new armor was capable of supporting more specialized equipment such as an external respirator, as the helmet did not feature an internal life support system. It was also more expensive to make, costing 3000 credits per armor set, as opposed to Phase 1's 2000 credits. The standard clone armor was supplemented by variant forms used by troopers in specialized roles, including pilots and bomb disposal teams. One frequently used armor variant was the HT-77 Cold Assault Armor, which provided Cold Assault Troopers with improved breath filters and insulation for Arctic condition. Insulated armor was also required for hot conditions, as in the case of the Clone Flame Troopers who wore fire-resistant suits. The Phase 2 Clone Trooper armor was retained by the clones who served as the first generation of Tom Troopers in the Galactic Empire that replaced the Republic after the end of the Clone Wars. The Imperial Army ended the practice of using color to denote unit affiliation, which the clones had adopted after allowing themselves to individualize under the Jedi's command. As a result, most of the remaining Clone Troopers took on the unformed appearance of white armored soldiers, their individual personalities replaced by program conformity. Despite this, Imperial Shock Troopers retained the distinctive red markings which identified them as members of the Coruscant Guard. Developed by the Imperial Department of Military Research, Stormtrooper armor was the standard issue armor of the Imperial Army's Stormtrooper Corps and was manufactured on planets such as Gelvenen. It was introduced sometime after the conclusion of the Clone Wars and was intended to replace the Phase II Clone Trooper armor. Its reinforced combat helmet featured an integrated comlink, audio pickup, two artificial air intakes, and a broadband communications antenna powered by a single power cell. The helmet featured built-in filtration systems that extracted breathable atmosphere from polluted environments. The helmet's visual processor assisted the wearer in seeing in darkness, glare, and smoke, though it limited the wearer's field of vision. When firing a blaster, the helmet's visor polarized against the glare. Stormtrooper armor was capable of protecting its wearer in extreme environments including deserts, forests, icy wastelands, and limited exposure to the vacuum of space. The armor's torso plating featured environmental control on its midsection. Its black body glove was vacuum sealed and made of a smart material that could adjust to the wearer's body heat and external temperature. Utility belts were equipped 
with a variety of features including a compact toolkit, power packs, energy rations, and a holster for an E11 medium blaster rifle. Higher ranks were signified with a color-coded pauldron worn over the right shoulder. The rank of commander was represented with an orange pauldron, though soldiers who served under the Grand Inquisitor had theirs colored red. Several black pauldron stormtroopers accompanied Grand Moff Wolof Tarkin. White pauldrons represented the rank of sergeant. As for their clone predecessors, Imperial soldiers had their own specialized troopers, such as snow troopers, with an armor capable of protecting its wearers from extreme cold, and scout troopers with a lighter armor, giving them more flexibility and maneuverability. First Order Stormtroopers wore stark white armor. Like its predecessors, the armor was worn over a black body glove. During its conflict with the Resistance, the First Order sought to have the recognizable and once feared Stormtroopers once again lead the charge against the former enemies of the Galactic Empire. The design of past Stormtrooper armor was improved upon, adding at least greater flexibility through an updated joint design. One Stormtrooper captain, Phasma, wore her own distinctive Stormtrooper armor, polished in chromium as a representation of power. Other specialized Stormtroopers, such as Flame Troopers and Snow Troopers, wore a variant of the First Order Stormtrooper armor, representing their specializations. To denote rank, commanding Stormtroopers wore color-coded pauldron armor plates. The Stormtrooper helmets had a glossy Betaplast finish, which required constant cleaning. They were also equipped with a smoke filtration system and an external tank hookup, although the helmets could not filter toxins. Aside from providing standard protection for the wearer's head, the Stormtrooper helmet had both communication and targeting systems for the foot soldiers. As a result, the First Order appropriated the tradition of the white armored soldier that began with the clones who fought for the Republic. The appearance of the First Order Stormtroopers, as well as their Imperial precursors, further morphed the clone army's legacy from a symbol of honorable defense into a faceless icon of fascism. If you like my content, feel free to share it on your social media. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All the links are available in the description below. I'll see you next week for another review, and until then, may the Force be with you, always. Remember, the Force will be with you, always.